For our next example, we have a totally different type of function that involves several things we may not have seen before. Firstly, in our pseudocode, we, do, we are going to have some sort of strange command here, repeat, until. This is like a do-while loop. We're going to iterate on this code until eventually something is true. What we're going to be doing is flipping a coin, and if the coin is heads, we win, and if it's tails, we quit the game and we lose. Imagine this is some sort of casino game, and you want to try and, you know, to keep playing as long as possible. To try and analyze this, let's try and define something. Let x be the number of heads flipped. And if we can understand the number of heads that we flip, we will be able to understand what's happening here. If we flipped four heads, we would go through that loop five times. Why five times? Because we always go through the loop at least once because of the fact that it, we are doing a do while type structure and not a while type structure. So if x equals one, then the runtime is 2c. If x equals 2, the runtime is 3c, and we could keep doing that. So let's try and write down our formula. We're going to again try this from the definition and see what happens. So we have the expected time is equal to c plus the expected value of x. Why, is it equal, why, why do we have that? That c is to account for the fact that the loop always happens. And if we can determine the expected value of x and then multiply it by a constant c, that will tell us how many times we're running through the loop multiplied by the, the cost of each run, which is constant. So we want to understand how to find out the expected numbers of heads here. And now this is just some sort of prob probability problem. We've now walked away from the algorithm problem and are transferring down a different probability problem. So let's see what we have e t of n is equal to c plus the sum over all possible outcomes times the probability of that outcome times the number of outcomes maybe that's getting a little weird let's try and maybe use a different notation because we're not just finding expected time here so let's use i to mean the number of heads the number of heads can go from zero up till Infinity? Huh. Interesting. Times the probability that x is equal to that outcome times that outcome. That's the definition of expected value. And now we get into this ugly thing of how likely is it that I get exactly a fixed number of heads? It's not clear because in order to get one head and only one head... I need to have the exact outcome of heads followed by tails. And that's going to get a bit tedious to write out. So instead of doing that, let's try and use a theorem that I had in our other notes but have yet to use. So I'll paste it here for us. Here's a useful theorem. It says x is a non-negative random variable. So it takes on values from 0 to infinity. Then we can compute this expected value in this totally different way. What we do is we compute the probability that x is greater than or equal to a certain value. And that's a lot easier. How likely is it that we get, get at least one heads? All that I need to compute is the fact that I flipped heads on the first go. That's a 50-50 chance. How likely is it that I get two heads? Well, it means I got a heads on the first go and a heads on the second go. This looks like it might be a better usage of our time. Before we dig too deeply into using this theorem, let us try and prove it. It's actually not too bad. The expected value of x is equal to the sum from i equals 0 to infinity of the probability that x is equal to i times that value i. Now, if we write this out, we have 0 times the probability that x is equal to 0 plus 1 times the probability that x is equal to 1 plus 2 times the probability that x is equal to 2 plus 3 times the probability that x is equal to 3 
and we could keep going. I am going to rewrite this in a sort of funny way. I'm going to write it as the probability. This first one doesn't matter because it's just zero times something. We're going to write the probability that x equals 1 plus the probability that x is equal to 2, purposely ignoring the coefficient, plus the probability that x is equal to 3, and so on. And then after I'm done adding up all of those, all infinitely many, I'm going to add on the probability that x is equal to 2, plus the probability that x is equal to 3, and so on. And if we look, by writing it this way, I still have two copies of the probability that x is equal to 2. And then below this, I'm going to write the probability that x is equal to 3, and so on. And if I repeat this process, I would have three copies of the probability that x is equal to 3, then presumably four copies of the probability that x is equal to 4, and so on. And the nice thing about writing it out this way in this sort of weird ladder slash staircase-like structure is that we have this first line is exactly the probability that x is greater than or equal to 1. And that second line is the probability that x is greater than or equal to 2. And the third line is the probability that x is greater than or equal to 3. And so on infinitely. And that's exactly what we had at the start. So this is equal to the sum from i equals 1 to infinity of the probability that x is greater than or equal to i. Now let's try and use this formula in a way that's helpful. So when we tried it originally, we said that figuring out these probabilities, all infinitely many of them, is a bit tedious. So instead, let's solve it a different way. Let's do that down here. E t of n is equal to c plus c times the expected value of x. And I'm going to compute that expected value of x by this formula for non-negative random variables. So this is equal to c plus c times the sum from i equals 1 to infinity of the probability that x is greater than or equal to i. So in order to analyze that summation, I must have an understanding of what those probabilities are. So what is the probability that x is greater than or equal to 1? That means we flipped at least one heads. In order for that to be true, we need to flip the first heads. That's one half of the time. And then there's all of those other possibilities afterwards, but in order to have at least one, it's half of the time. In order to have x greater than or equal to 2, that's all of the cases where I flip two heads back to back. Well, the probability of one heads is 1 over 2. The probability of another heads, I multiply by 1 over 2. Those are independent random events. So to compute the probability that we have x is equal to 2 and x is equal, sorry, probability of flipped one heads on the first go and one heads on the second go is the probability of flipping a heads on the first go multiplied by the probability of heads on the second go. And that is by independence of those events. Now, what is the probability that x is greater than or equal to 3? Well, that's 1 half times 1 half times 1 half. And let's try and write these out in a nicer way. The second one I could write as 1 over 2 squared. This third one I could write as 1 over 2 cubed, which means the probability that x is greater than or equal to i, interpolating that pattern, would be 1 half to the i. Let's use that in our formula then. We have e t of n is equal to c plus c times the expected value of x, which is written as the summation from i equals 1 to infinity of 1 half to the i. That summation looks convenient at first glance, but we need to be careful because it does not start at zero. So this equals c plus c times, it converges to the first term of the series, which is 1 half over 1 minus a half. And that just equals 1. That's 1 and a half over 1 half. So this equals 2c. So the expected time is that it runs twice. 
once for the first go and once for this and then once uh, and the second go that is what is most likely what does this tell us this tells us that the expected time even though it could potentially go on infinitely is in theta of one because it's equal to a constant but the worst case runtime for this code is infinite so the worst case complexity is theta of infinity and this is an example of where using infinities even though they seem like they might be abstract and why would they ever show up they show up in a very practical way here and to help us analyze this problem